Get cards, everybody, because they will continue with a game called Student Union. Where were we? Um, here you go. So you see, Lane blamed Alice and Kane blamed Lane, but it was my bad idea of a joke. Oopsie, there you go. Uh, let me see if it looks fine, looks fine. Her hands tremble in her lap. I'm the most at fault, sir. Thank you for choosing to come forward. It was very mature. I agree. Guilt is compelling. Mr. Underwood adjusts his rolled up sleeves. I step forward. She also would like to join the student union, sir. We're resolved to ensuring that when these kids of misunderstandings occur, no one should resort to violence. Underwood raised an eyebrow and Holly stares at me incredulously. She then looks at Alice, who merely grins. She's outnumbered. Is that so? Yes, sir. He looks at the ceiling for a few seconds. He's probably deciding what to do with this. Alice finally chimes in. I think his punishment was too severe. Your input is noted. I disagree. Da da da. What the hell? What's up? What's going on with the neighbors? Why are so many barking at this time of morning? 1.30 a.m.? God damn it. He leans forward. In strict terms, both Kane and Lane committed assault. Unacceptable. Both of you girls caused a lot of trouble with your mischief. Using that fake hand from the drama club, what were you thinking? Sir, I was overly competitive and took it too far. It was a prank in bad taste, and I realize it now. He glances at me before massaging the bridge of his nose. You three will perform janitorial duties for the next three evenings for one hour after school. Ever economical. Will that interfere with the cleaner's work? We do not have yet a janitor this year. Then who cleaned the stairs? In light of the circumstance, I believe it will provide insight on the school's current needs for your group and represent a team building exercise. We're still allowed to create the group? Tentatively. I'll do it, sir. I will too. Good, Alice. Of course, sir. Mr. Underwood stands. Thank you all for taking responsibility and making an effort to move past this. I expect we will not need to have a repeat of this conversation. We nod with varying speed. Holly's particular emphatic. Okay. We three walk down the hall quietly at first, but eventually, Holly can't contain her need to vent. Why did you make me go in there and join the club? What the heck? She lightly punches me in protest, hopping with each bab. I smirk and gently defend myself. Hey, we said no violence, remember? You said several things I don't agree with, mister. With my hand on her head to hold her back, she puffs. You should feel glad. I could have gotten revenge like in the gangster movies. You were going to cut off my pinky? If I was feeling poetic, I'd make it your whole hand. Eep. She hops back. Alice watches us with arms crossed. We all got off easy, actually. I continue to address Holly. So I can count on your vote, right? It, it's only fair that if I join to apologize to you that I vote for Alice, so apologize to her, okay? I give her a head pat. She swatches away in mock protest. That's fair enough, thanks. The bell sounds as Alice treads closer. Her voice travels through the ringing. So you're not quitting after all? No, I guess not. If you accept my apology, I'll consider not keeping you on cleanup duty. I won't do that, but I will work with you if you remain semi-competent. I extend a handshake. Deal. Alice stares at my hand long enough to discomfort me. And walks away. Holly shakes my outstretched hand in place of Alice and whispers, Deal, he <laughs> See you after school. Heh, <laughs> see ya. She leaves too. My stomach growls, but I can't hear it over the churn of students around me. I feel the rumble of my abdomen as I go to class. Okay. I'm still getting confused here. Like, where are we going with this? Having deciphered the angry stares from yesterday's study hall, Coach decided we could use a free period in the gym today. Is this one of those slow burn visual novels? I sit in the bleachers alone, watching students socialize and play on the basketball court. I'm not looking forward to unpaid cleanup duty after this. 
I run my fingers through my hair, carefully up to the edges of the bandage. The itchiness irritates me. Does it hurt? I flinch and turn to the tall girl from yesterday. Oh, not right. She nods. It's sore, but not too bad. What's up? You're pale. My confusion disperses after a second and I chuckle. Oh, you're worried about me? I'm okay. She places a fresh water bottle on the seat near me. You can have this. Huh. Hey, you never said why you weren't interested. Inviting her to sit with me, I pat the seat. She hesitates. In the paid student group, I mean. She sits a little further away than my gesture indicated. I may be going home soon. I sure hope so. The day is almost over. To my home country. I opened the bottle and drink. I'm thirstier than I realized. Where are you from? Russia. My family may move back. Sorry. No, I want it. What's wrong with here? She stares at me. I'll rephrase. Why do you want to move back? Friends and family. You have those here too, right? Not my brothers or my boyfriend. The last of the cold water slides down my throat as I upturn the bottle. I cap the empty container. That's hard, sorry. Hope the move back won't be too much of a pain. Thanks for the water. Do you need to leave school? Do I look that bad? You appear unsteady. I smile and shake my head. It's sweet of her to worry. I stand firmly as an example. I'm fine, see? I'm going to take a little walk. Talk to you later. If she responds non-verbally, I don't see it as I turn to stride into the hall. I check my phone. No unread messages. Uh... Save here. Return. Wanna text Miss Webb? How are your classes? This is meant to be an emergency contact line. I've got Mr. Underwood's number too. He's male. Surely you recognize the issue. What are you afraid of? Excuse me, do you need something? <laughs> do I? What a waste of time. I lift my eyes from my phone while entering the restroom. Prodding under my eye with my forefingers, I inspect myself in front of the sink. I'm pale, and the shinier under my left eye is dark. I splash my face. The door weighs more than usual, but I push back into the corridor. Oh, we're getting weak. Only a few steps towards the gym before I stop. That noise was familiar. It's from the upper floor. Deciding to investigate, I hurry to the stairs. Still clean. While climbing, I massage my gums with my tongue. A taste of copper. Hmm. Interesting. The second story hallway comes into view. I shuffle in the direction of the noise. And soon I'm in front of Mr. Underwood's office. I knock at the closed door. Hello, is everything alright? Only silence responds. I'm coming in. Just before my hand touches the knob, it rattles violently. I flinch and step back, staring at the jerking handle. What are you doing? Oh, I spin on my heel and bump into Nat's chest. Lucky bastard. He steadies me by the shoulders and pushes me back slightly. Why are you breaking the office of a teacher? Shaking my head, I sputter a response. No, no, there's someone in there. Nat stares into my eyes for a few seconds. After evaluating me to satisfaction, she releases me and opens the door. Empty. She faces me. We will go back, okay? I don't know what to say. I walk into Mr. Underwood's office. There's no other exit, and the window is closed. Besides, we're on the second floor. I'm not crazy. I think about saying, I don't say it. Hmm. Now I clasps my hand and leads me out, gently closing the door behind us. I lose myself in thought. We near the gym. And I jerk away. Why did you follow me? To help. Why? Da -da -da. What do you get? You need me to have a reason? She pauses as I lean on the locker. It is medicine. You think I'm sick? My medicine, when stressed, exhausted, ill, it is a good remedy to help someone else. Why is she so sweet, though? 
I rubbed the back of my neck. Are you going to tell anyone? Not unless you leave again. She means what she says. Sure. I avoid her steady gaze and push off the locker and into the gym. I'm not some sort of troublemaker. With skepticism, she eyes me from top to bottom. I reciprocate, my eyes catching on her features. I have a boyfriend. Ah, oh, really? God damn it. Is that what's stressing you out? You don't look sick or tired. She runs her fingers through her hair and watches the students play basketball. It is difficult to be separate. Her eyes flick between me and the other students. I bet if you got suspended, they'd have to take you back. Her eyes widen. They? Your parents. Her lips curve at my joke. See, you are trouble. Is it work that keeps your parents here? Yeah. I plop at the bleachers and now follows. She continues to watch me. Well, if you ever want to talk about it, I owe you one. What do you owe? A favor in return for you not telling anyone about my troublemaking. You forget the water. Two then, okay. Okay. Content that I'm now stationary, she retreats to the court in her usual graceful way. Uh-oh. I palm my forehead to wipe away small beads of sweat. Remember when you were being paranoid? You think I'm always paranoid. You are. I mean, when you said this year was weird. Why? Just curious what you meant. The school is haunted. I'm sure of it. Ghosts don't exist. What made you think of that? Oh, so it's more, it leans more on the supernatural thingy. Okay. It says Evans typing. I swallow and glance at the court. Nat performs a crossover, dribbling past two defenders into the post. She narrowly misses her layup. Hear some door slamming? Loud noises from the second floor? Hello? You stop typing, the bastard. Bastard. Can't believe it. I'm the one who gets to stop typing and stuff. Damn it. I gather the bottles of cleaner I knocked from the shelf. My first instinct leads me to bend at the waist, which I regret. With the low winds, I strain and retreat from the dim room, arms cradling the supplies. Mr. Underwood was quick to text instructions to us in a group text, and Alice was quicker to address Holly and me with instructions of her own. I'm in the mood to sleep, not struggle for control, so I'm humoring her. Stepping over the broken glass in my own dry blood, I ease my payload across the desk. Mr. Underwood wanted us to clean the art room and gym today. Coach Jean will apparently hold us accountable. Alice asks that I handle this room while she and Holly take on the gym for the hour. I unfurl a plastic trash bag and begin my task. The glass proves easy enough to gather. My blood spattered on, under and in front of the door, is not easy to clean. It's not a lot, but it still managed to cause as much as mess as it could. I buff the floor with the damp rug until drops of sweat from my forehead contribute to the lubrication of cleaning solution. I flake off a good amount of residue, but a few areas are just too stubborn. The label on the bottle informs me. This cheap stuff won't cut it. I'll take the trash to the bin outside and stop by the science lab on the way back. But you need a ride home. Saying no is tempting as a gut reaction. I'd have to walk though. Yes, please. I'll be ready around 5. Wait in my room when you finish. Thank you, ma'am. Don't call me ma'am. Why not? I deposit the trash bag in the bin outside and head to the science room. Expecting an empty room, I open the door without a knock. Ah, whoa. Get down! She takes me by the wrist and yanks me behind the front desk with her. What the hell? Quiet, close your eyes. Why? She holds my head down firmly as a loud explosion occurs in the middle of the room. Oh, this, does this explain the loud noises? But this doesn't. No, it's supposed to be an explosion. What are you doing? Basic but functional. Anna stands up with me and we observe the fractured plastic bottle tipped over dramatically. Thin vapor puffs from the lid and small bits of plastic litter in the room. I blink twice and try shaking the ringing out of my ear. What are you doing in here? 
Alice looks happy to answer that. I'm producing miniature hydrogen bombs and testing various mechanical methods of production and containment. You're making a bomb? Bombs, plural. Relax, Neanderthal. It's perfectly safe. I watch the smoldering bottle. Doesn't look like it. What are you doing in here instead of in the gym anyway? I'm interested in the energy production capabilities of the reaction and exploring practical uses via automation. What are you talking about? Two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, high temperature, big boom. Understand? There are many uses for explosive energy. Think hybrid cars which utilize the energy release to make a more fuel efficient vehicle. Where do you get hydrogen? There's no way we just store that here. I made it simple. There are a few ways to do it, but I combined sodium hydroxide with aluminum. I shake my head. Okay, whatever, fine. Why are you not cleaning like you're supposed to? She closes the door I had left open. I'm not going to be a janitor in the future, nor a housewife, so cleaning duty yields no practical experience for me. That doesn't matter, it's punishment. You know I could tell Mr. Underwood about this. I know that you couldn't tell Mr. Underwood about this. Explain. I'll deny it, and the ensuing conflict would handily destroy any team building efforts and likely scrap the student union formation. What a bitch. And you do not want that, so you have no power here. I have the power. While you're here, wanna be my assistant? She moves to the table and erects the bow. No, did you leave Holly in the gym? I did, yeah. And you called me selfish? I didn't say I wasn't too. Do you know how to clean up blood? Alice glares at me, glances at the door, and places her hand inside the desk drawer. Since I'm cleaning the art room, I need to clean up my blood from this morning. It dried and won't come up. Oh. She frees her hand from the drawer. Yeah, mix a little bleach with water. Let it sit on the sinks for 15 minutes and wash it up after. Huh, you sure? Of course, I have more a thorough solution, but a simple method will work for your duties. She waves me away and returns to her task. I hesitate for a second and open the door to leave. Thanks. Yep. She seems like a pain to deal with. I return to cleanup duty. I dust off the rest of the classroom while waiting for the solution to sit and afterwards rub it clean. Alice's method works well, actually. Some tiny patches remain on the door. I doubt anyone would complain when seeing this improvement. Or maybe they would, but what's choke cherry high without a few blood stains? Will you please help me with the cleaning? Yes, I'm all alone. Please, please, please. I could help her. Then again, we're already even in my book. While I'm waiting for Miss Webb, I could check the second floor again. Um, I mean, she did ask first before making me want to go to the second floor. Fine, I'm sure it won't take long. Evan would be jealous. I collect the supplies and transition to the gym. Why is Holly even friends with me? I don't get it. <laughs> I approach the bench along the court. Holly lies on her back, immersed in her cell phone. She hasn't noticed me. What are you doing? Holly hops up and stumbles wildly, nearly dropping her phone. Um, uh, hi, that was fast. And that was suspicious. Well, it shouldn't be because it's not. I scan the area. There are no cleaning implements, which fuels my suspicion. Yeah, I'm gonna use this as a thumbnail. <laughs> Where are your cleaning supplies? Alice was getting them, remember? Remember? For 40 minutes and you didn't think to check on her? I most certainly did. I texted her when she was helping you for a bit. She said to text you for help later, since you both would finish early by working together. Damn it, Alice. I pushed my palm across my face. Fine, and why didn't you start here? She looks down into her hand, smile faded. You both had the supplies. Then why didn't you come help or ask for our supplies? Seriously. Her eyes water. Her hands clench together in front of her. She mumbles. What? Speak up. The blood. I didn't want to see it. My eyes widen as I realize why. Damn it, I shouldn't forget that. It's okay. I'm here now, so let's just finish up quick, yeah? She nods solemnly, and we begin our task. I glance at Holly periodically to confirm her status. A few minutes pass. I'm sorry I'm not being around as much over the break. I know Evan wanted to hang out too. 
It's okay, I... I really was working a ton. Besides, I thought you might want some space for a while. Her smile returns. Everyone thought that at the same time. It probably didn't help that I had to get a new phone number. How about I make it up to you? Want to spend time with me and Evan this weekend? I push the white dust mop over the floor, moving away from her. Maybe, if you promise to make it fun. My time is top tier. You boys must earn it. We'll figure something out, so long as you're not sick of me by the end of our punishment sessions. Punishment sessions make it sound way kinkier than it is. As I near her with the mop, I wiggle my eyebrows. Do you want it to be kinkier? No, bad. I chuckle and continue dusting the court. Holly picks up trash from under the bleachers. The garbage stretches out the trash bag she used to gather it. I approach as she grunts loudly. Struggling to lift the bag, I cross my arms and watch her. Need help? Pfft, not from a peasant. I'm more like a mighty warrior, fresh from battle, adrenaline still pumping through me. I point to my bandage. So come on, give me that. Gripping beneath her two hands with one hand, I squeeze the bag closed tightly and lift it over my shoulder. My other arm cradles many of our supplies. Mighty indeed, how chivalrous. She scoops up the remaining dust mop and we journey to the janitor's closet. Can I ask you something weird? Sure. Wait, maybe. Have you heard or seen anything weird around school? Holly looks up at me, examining my forehead as it beads with sweat. What do you mean? Loud noises, banging and thuds from the second floor. Nope, I could ask granddaddy if there's construction. I shake my head quickly. No, it's not important. I heave the trash bag into the dumpster with a grunt before we move back inside and to the closet. Dad, hey, are you okay? Yeah, it's been a very long day. We restock the shelves with the slightly diminished supplies. Or at least I do. Not sure what Holly's doing. Well, from behind I hear the faint click of the door closing. What in the fuck? I was like, really dude? It's weird to me that Holly is this, uh, I don't know, close to the main character. I'm like, it already gave me weird vibes. Like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> Turns out she has a thing for the guy? Alright. I turn and look down at Holly. She's close, looking up into my eyes. Our valiant hero, war-torn and battered, deserves a reward. I feel my cheeks flush. What did you have in mind? Do you know what harvest goddesses are known for? Uh, what? Their fertility? Shit, your goals and squeezes my head. <laughs> yeah, but also their healing powers. What are you doing, silly? Shush. She massages my hand slowly with her soft fingers, pressing into the muscles of my palm. Then she slowly works her way down each finger. She rubs between each and every joint. Carefully, she rolls her slim fingers all over my hand. My eyes close, shoulders relax. You're good at that. Shush. Her voice is a whisper. My hand rests limp in her grip while she systematically fondles me. I did this at cons sometimes. Booth babe strategies to lure in otaku hee hee. I speak in a whisper too, completely relaxed. I bet it worked well. She hums. I open my eyes just in time to see her parting from my hand with a kiss. Her lips were warm, we're both blushing. With that, dear warrior, the ritual is complete. You will be fully rejuvenated with 110% health upon resting at an inn. Wow, what a buff. Do I get one if I do all your work tomorrow, too? Maybe? Well, too bad. You need to pull your weight, even if you're tiny. Hee <laughs> hee. Dude, what about your friend, though? Evan! Dude, this doesn't look good. Come on, man. She spins around and swings open the door before hopping out. I follow with a stupid smile on my face. Huh. Holly ran away, silly girl. I repeat the thought of Evan being jealous about my time with Holly. Probably best to spare him every detail. Oh god, dude, oh no. Friendship will be over. I feel unsteady. My fingers dig into my shirt beneath the jacket and above my heart. The smooth polyester cotton fabric conforms to my grip. Ready? My hand returns to my side at the sound of Miss Webb's voice. Yeah, Miss Webb? Her eyes flick over me. Ask me on the way. Do you... 
Do you what? Your eyes lock to mine once you reach the first floor. Stay home tomorrow. What? I didn't stutter. Why? My vision blurs and I hold my hand over my eye. She pulls my hand down. Are you serious? Maybe she's right, but I can't. I have to clean his punishment. You can. You have my permission. Do you know Mr. Underwood well? Rolling her eyes, she resumes her walk. I know him a little. You called him Turner, so I was just curious. What was he like? Like he is now, but happier. Rosalie leans against Miss Webb's car as we approach. She notices my curiosity. Sam's my ride. Do you normally ride with her? Sometimes, uh huh. Miss Webb slides into the front seat. It's unlocked. Ross and I join her. Okay. Seems like they're in a quiet mood. That definitely works for me right now. I wonder if he's dropping off me or Ross first. My attention turns to the window. I'm so tired. What a day. I smell Miss Webb's lavender air freshener. I think one of them is wearing a pretty perfume, actually. I drift to sleep for just a bit. Hey, we're here. Looks like my place is the first stop. Thanks again. Miss Webb offers me a long look. Get some rest. Immediately after I step out, Ross climbs into the front seat to replace me. Shoes, what have I told you? Come on. As I walk away from the arguing, I notice Jester curled on the front step. I bend to pet his back. Hey, buddy, this morning I could have sworn you were being stubborn again and stayed inside. Jester lifts his rear to press into my hand. I step in front of the door and hold the knob steady while reaching for my key. But it's not locked. Uh-oh. Looking back where Miss Webb's car was, I confirm they already left. I hesitate. Uh-oh, why is it unlocked? Opening the door slowly, I step inside the dark entrance. I ease the door closed with an unaudible click. Light rustling can be heard from my room. I inch toward my kitchen, one hand following the wall to keep me steady. My eyes adjust to the dark. I slide the large kitchen knife from its holder. You can just open the light. The sharp tip faces outward as I wheel it with both hands. The rustling continues. I hold my breath and move closer. What was that click? The sound is more distinct right outside the door to my room. Hmm. I kick the door open and face the intruder. Ah, oh yeah, yeah. What the hell did you? I lower my weapon. What are you doing in here? Evan, having pressed himself against the wall, takes a step forward. I, I was waiting for you. Yeah, why were you messing with my shit? I was bored. Wow, I've been here for a minute, huh? I don't hide my irritation. How did you get in? The spare, the key, the extra one you keep behind the stairs. Note to self, don't leave a spare out. You don't have to stop, not on my account, I won't tell anyone. About the key, I mean. My anger fades. I lift the knife again. Guess I'm gonna have to kill you, huh? Very funny. Why are you in the dark? I set the knife on my bedside table and flick the light switch. The light does not turn on. Your power is out, I think. Great, I rub my face. Okay, so why are you waiting for me? I couldn't say it in writing. You never know who's going to see it. Say what? What you said, it's true. The noise is at school, I think. I hold up my palm. No, it's not. I was joking. You're being ridiculous again. No, I'm not. Well, no, I'm not. Not this time. Honest. I sit on my bed. Look, I'm really tired today. Lane, I'm serious. I am too. Out. He doesn't budge. I, I go in the library instead of the study hall in the afternoon. Yeah, it feels like unless there's half the students missing, coach wouldn't notice. As long as I don't do it too often, it's okay. But I've been doing it more. Congrats on your new level of delinquency. It's like he's choosing his words carefully while he avoids eye contact with me. I'm not the only one. In there, I mean. I've seen Principal Decker and Mr. Underwood talking. They were arguing today. About what? Well, I couldn't hear well. They were talking low. Talking quietly, I think. Mr. Underwood said something about a sustainable solution. I don't understand the problem. They were just talking. Most everyone at school knows things are tense because funding was cut. I massaged the nape of my neck. 
that's, well yeah, but they were really serious. I felt like if they caught me, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Of course, because you were skipping class. But why would they keep meeting there to have important conversations? I don't know, but I do know it's probably not as nefarious as you seem to think. How do you know? It's not normal. But it's not really that abnormal. Look, I'll go with you tomorrow if it makes you feel better. Okay, good. Right at the study period, right? Yeah, geez, you need to relax. He stares at my bandage. I need to relax? What about you? What about me? Sorry, I just mean, what's going on lately? Are you okay? I chuckle. I've got a serious headache, but I'm fine. Why are the lights out? What do you mean, what the, why are the lights out? Beats me, I just got home. I'll call the power company later to figure it out. Where's your mom? His concern becomes frustration. Why have you been like this? What's wrong with asking for help? You, you clearly need it. I stand up. I clearly need help, huh? Evan steps back. I didn't mean it in a bad way. It's not bad. How do I need help then? What the hell do you know? I don't know, you're right. I just think it's okay to ask for help. I'll help if I can. Well, I don't need your fucking help. Then why'd you ask me to join the group? Because I knew you'd say yes, because you always do. You rely on me too much. You obsess over what I'm doing. Get your own damn life. Get a single other friend, if you can. You need to leave. Ever gently spaces the extra key on my dresser and exits. Oh boy, that was awkward, a conversation. Uh, so, is, did, did his parents abandon him, or are his parents dead? So, I'm going to stop it here, because I've been playing for too long. This is Student Union. Oh no, my friendship is on the... <laughs> it's treading on thin ice. Because, what is up with Holly? So, she has a thing for the main character? I knew something was weird about her. <laughs> but Evan, poor Evan... If you want to try the game for yourselves, the links are in the description. That is all for today. Stay safe and take care of yourselves. And wonder what's the supernatural, huh?